mothers, you know what I'm saying? It's the dads too, you know what I'm saying? But because you got to be there fully for your kids, you know what I'm saying? So just spending time by yourself too, making sure you get time by yourself. That's important. Speaking of time by yourself, tell us, you know, one thing I really like about your platform and your presence on social media, you speak a lot about self-care. And mm-hmm. for you to be a black male, um, I don't like how social media trying to do the whole, what is it, soft man error? No, <laughs> it's nothing. It's yeah. nothing simp or soft about a man taking care of himself. So what what does self care look like to you? And you mentioned a morning routine, so let us in on your morning routine. Yeah. So I like to. So if I don't have school, I like to get up. I like to get up around six. I just like to think to myself, like just think a little bit. Um, I might write something down, but but it's just me sitting in my own thoughts for a little bit. Pray, uh, read my Bible scripture, pray. Um, <laughs> after that, I'll check my notifications on, on on my platforms real quick, and then make myself some breakfast. Just chill, you know. What yeah. I'm Gather my thoughts and go to the gym. That's super important. You know what I'm saying? Get to the gym, work out, <clears throat> come home, knock out any content. <clears throat> so, because it, it's all about creating your life to a point where you enjoy it. You know, yes. a lot of people can't get out of the whole mental battle because they don't enjoy what they're doing. Yeah. It's it's it make an exit strategy to the life that you want. That's 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 the best advice that I can give you. Make an exit strategy to the to the life that you want. It'll make your mental health so much better. My morning routine is just me waking up and doing the things that I love. So my mental health is that's why when I got on here, you act like I could jump through a wall. I'm great. I'm I'm living in what God called me to be. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's super important. You know what I'm saying? It's simple. Get up and treat yourself right. Like, do the things. Um, you go get your nails done, haircut, look good, clean, buy yourself stuff, stay nice, treat your body right. That's super important. Eat good mm-hmm. food. You know what I'm saying? And be around good people. Man, I can't stress it enough. It's the, the people you surround yourself with can make and break your life. I'm telling you. Yes. Drain you mentally, physically, emotionally, and have you in a place. You look up five years and you like, man, I have been dealing with this for five years. Like, Yeah, I haven't progressed at dude, all in five years. But learn how to cut people off. I'm telling you, it's okay to get new friends. It's okay to get in new environments. Please. That's so important. As a as a grown man, as an adult, is do you find it difficult creating new friendships or creating new spaces? Oh, man, that, I, it might be difficult for women to do that. But for men to come together... um. It's just simple. <laughs> you find somebody that that got a like a knack for something, and men are pretty simple with man. Let's you know, it's, it's pretty it's pretty simple for men to make new friends. But when I when I talk about invite, I really don't. Me too, personal. I really don't like just meeting new people. I like to watch them for a little bit. That's another good thing about social media. When you meet people, you can just see how they live, watch them a little bit. Yeah. But when it comes from getting in new circles, it's just like finding whatever you're trying to do and getting around those type of people. Let's just say if you want to be the, the, the best credit guy, getting around people that's doing credit, you know. Yeah. Oh, so it's not like finding new friends. It's just finding new environments. And in those yes. environments, you make friends. You know what I'm saying? So yes. that's what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Find new environments that serve in what you're trying to do. Yep. You know what I mean? And hey, if you want to be a party promoter, you should be in a club every weekend. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're serving what you're doing. You, you should be in environments that serve in what you're doing. And it's okay to go out and, and be in these environments and still enjoy yourself. Just know majority of your time should be spent doing what you want your life to look like with those people. Yes, and being intentional. So if you're going to be a party promoter, being at the club every weekend don't look like you one yeah. popping the bottles. <laughs> yeah, be definitely intentional in the environment. <laughs> That's super important, too. When you get into these spaces, just asking the right questions and being intentional about what you want to get out of it. You know what I mean? So that's super important too. Don't get caught up in sticking around people for too long when you had a vision of going to do your own. Finally branch off and actually get what you need from it too. Because a lot of people, I don't like people that come around me to change and sit around me and not try to change. You know what I mean? Yeah. Be productive in the space that you're in and serve that space that you're in. How you do one thing is how you do everything. I cannot yes. say that enough. I don't want to be in a circle or I don't want to be in new, I don't want to be in any new or old environments where progression is not the key. That's, that's we don't even have to be progressing towards the same thing, but you need to have an, a, a goal. Yeah, no, that's, that's super important. It's super important because that's how you form haters because I can't have you dim in my light. That's what happened. You try to keep old friends and bring everybody with you. They don't have that. They don't have that I same gave, drive. I gave you the vision, not y'all the vision. Sometimes you got to separate to elevate. That's super important. You have to. 
You Step definitely right have to. It's, it's hard. You have friends for 10 plus years, and these are friends that's been keeping your mental health straight. It's going to be hard when you leave. It's going to be uncomfortable, but you're going to look up two to three years. That's the thing. This, this world is so fed up on instant gratification. But you look up in two to three years, and you're like, man, my life has completely changed. You yep. know what I'm saying? So it might not be measurable day to day, but over the course of a year, you're like, man, I'm so glad I walked away from that environment. I'm so glad I did that. I'm so glad. Yeah. So, that's super important. Having that self-awareness, man, just knowing like, and not being afraid to like, people going to, listen, people going to do what's best for them at the end of the day. So yeah. always do what's best for you. No matter if you're like, oh, if I lead this person, I lead this environment, they going to, nah, man. <laughs> I always preach self-preservation is key. And people, the whole yeah. purpose of our body literally is to keep us alive. And mm-hmm. the core of that is people going to do what the be- what's best for them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every time, bro. Like it's every like time, that. you don't take stuff personal. You don't, you know. what I'm saying you just, it, you know, you do not. Don't take anything personal. Yeah, uh, the, learning to that. experience people and not own them. Mm, that's important too. You know, a lot of people they they man they can't get around somebody without trying to own them, and that messes you up. Mind. Too. You mind? What do you mean? You're mine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let yeah, people, and then another thing with my mental health too is like when some people tell you things about yourself, like really listen to them because sometimes your God can be speaking through your friends, like letting you know about problems about yourself that you really don't think you have, and you sitting there like just be willing to listen. I think that's what's super important about the way I was raised. It's like I had older brothers that was always on me, so I was always I was always listening, so I was always like able to receive, um, you know what I'm saying even negative opinions or positive, you know what I'm saying? I've always known how to like look at it and say, okay, so what can I change? Because there's always some truth in everything that somebody says. Even if you feel like you came off rude, look at it. See if you can change it. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like, man, maybe they're right. Maybe I should change this. That'll make you feel better as a person. Getting closer to how God wants us to be is going to always make your mental health and own work right. You know? Yeah. Now, Ali, where did Abundant... Break down the name Abundant Behavior and right. then tell us where you got this idea from and just kind of the birth of it. Yeah. So Abundant Behavior, man, I was, I always wanted to, so it's crazy. I started out with the life insurance and through that, man, we was doing these conference calls where we would have 50 plus people on and we would go in there and take turns speaking. And through that, I was like, man, I, I really like, I really like speaking. That felt good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Learning this stuff and speaking it and giving it to people and everybody was hitting me up like man bro like you really like you move rooms when you talk man you really like and so i started thinking to myself like all right let me do the motivational speaking so i kind of started putting gems on on instagram and everything and i'm like people listen like i was getting a lot of backlash because it's brand new but i'm like i'm gonna keep doing it you know i'm I'm gonna keep doing it i'm gonna keep doing it it feel good and so it was around like maybe like 2021 when social media 2022 when it started picking up real heavy like after the pandemic and it was nothing but like negativity on the internet, man. And I was in like a headspace where I was trying to like push my boys to get out the Navy, all my friends to get out the Navy so we can do some positive stuff. And most of them have. <laughs> we have, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of us, like most of all of us. And it was a lot of us in the group chat still to this day, super successful, you know, because of the environment. But I just wanted everybody to be successful. And so I'm like, man, there's so much negativity. Let me make a platform where I could bring some positivity to the to the to the platform. And that's really what it was, seeing a negative internet and like, man, let me reverse this a little bit with my platform and see how we can shake some rooms with it. And I was just thinking, man, what abundant. Like abundance is just like overflow with everything. Every time I listen to E.T. sermon, he always talking about living in the overflow. Like, you know what I'm saying? Make sure your cup is over full. You know what I'm saying? So abundance yeah. to me is just like that can apply to any area of your life. You want to do credit, do it abundantly. You want to be a good dad, do it abundantly. You want to do real estate, do it abundantly. Everything you do, you know what I'm saying? Like I said before, how you do one thing is everything. So I'm like, abundant behavior. Whatever you do, do it abundantly. You know what mm. I'm saying? So just, that's, that's where it came from. Behave abundantly. Abundantly, you know what I'm saying? Active Ooh, I like that. Go crazy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's where it came from, the name. And it just stuck. I liked it. It was. It, I just thought of it. And I said, abundant behavior. Let me come up with some sketches. And then when he, when the, well, actually the person that did this painting, Paulie Steez, he came up with my logo. I was like, that's it. <laughs> yeah. The orange and the brown. He came up with all the colors and everything. That was none of my idea. The orange and the brown, it was him, but it's so classy. I love the orange and the brown. How yeah. It's like classy, like, 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It definitely yeah. gives off like peace, abundance. Yeah, you know, it does. The orange and the brown, because he's really dope. But yeah, so yeah, that's how it came about. And it's been popping ever since, man. Talking to L, just like getting reassured. He was the first episode ever, man. He was the first person I reached out to because around that time, L was like probably only one of the people on social media that was really posting and having content. So I'm like, let's see how we go from this. And when I dropped that one, a lot of people reached out like, oh, man, you got a podcast? So every yeah. since then, I just built on it. Boom. And I said, man, yo, this is easy. I can do this. I, can, I love talking. I talk a lot. I talk too much sometimes. All <laughs> All the time, I talk too much, but she didn't know that was God planting that seed in me. She was trying to shut me up a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? But through me being hard head, I kept talking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how. Yeah, you know, that's how it came about, right there. Yeah, and so just like getting reassured, like through every podcast, the feedback, like you know, wasn't paying attention to the views, like I said, and so it just sparked like this this big movement, man, and then. I, I love your movement too, because you know I got a lot of veterans on my platform, but yours is dope too, because you really helping people get over that hump to get out, and that's the, the you got to have that that jump, and you it's it's just believing you gonna be good, and a lot yeah. of people can't get in that belief. Like man, I've been doing this for so long. It's been holding my family together. It's the glue, but I tell people, man, I got the blueprint for you over here. If you just trust me, right? I got you. you know what I'm saying? I got the blueprint. You know no what I'm saying? No lie. I show you. And I could point you in direction to another person who got a whole platform based on it. Because a lot of people, they want to see the results. And so if, if I can't help them, I send them straight to you. Like, you know what I'm saying? No doubt. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they they like your platform, how it looks. Somebody reached out to me. She was like, who is this? You know her? I was like, yeah, that's my homie, man. Get with her. She'll help you get right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Most <laughs> definitely. And I'm actually in the process of thinking about starting back up the veterans coaching. Because yeah. like you said, like, it's that jump. It's the jump. It's like getting out the military. It's like, okay, first jumping in is already like a thing. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then you want up. me to jump out? Yeah, yes. And then what? all you do while you in is tell you you ain't going to be nothing when you get out. <laughs> you, you, They you, instill that in your head. Like, you're going to be a failure here. if you get out early. You better retire. It says it in the Bible, faith comes from hearing. You've been hearing this for 15 years. You're going to start to believe it. Yeah, most yeah, definitely. Job McDonald's. Yeah. Man, when I sat down that short duty on my first CDB, I told them, I said, hey, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm getting out the Navy after this contract. <laughs> and I had a straight face. You know they throw you away when you they, tell they, them they, that. They threw me away from the day. From the, I did three years of throwaway duty. All peas. I didn't care. I was building my life on short duty. I was. <laughs> and everybody thought I was crazy at that galley. Everybody thought I was crazy, man. Everybody thought I was crazy. These same people hit me up to this day. Bro, what? <laughs> I told y'all I was getting out on a mission to become a millionaire. And I'm telling these people this to their face and they like, this man crazy. You damn right I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah. You're so, you have to be. You have to be. I was you have to be a little delusional. They know the people I was around. I, my mind was already strong enough. It was nothing that they could say to stop me. I didn't care. Man, well, I got out with $10,000 in a dream. <laughs> I know that's real. Listen, listen. I wasn't too hey, far behind you. I'm I like ten thousand dollars a BDB in a dream. Look, <laughs> I and, and knew I was gonna make it work. Knew I, I knew gonna, I was gonna make it work. I said, God, you ain't bring me this far to only bring me this far. That's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? You no got to take me. You ain't bring me this far to leave me right here. I already know we going up after this, and it's been I've been going up for two years now. <laughs> listen and that's how you, you and you have to have that mentality mm -hmm. talk to me about the 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 pace of staying consistent mm -hmm. right yeah. i saw you made this post about how um your friend basically bullied you into getting into shape yeah Ooh. yeah <laughs> that so, goes back to talking about if somebody tells you something <laughs> you may not be too far off no matter how harsh it is it's, it might be god trying to uh get saved man <laughs> Been telling you, come on, like now I'm gonna bully you since you don't, you know, right? Like, like that's how I take it, especially people that have good hearts and they mean they mean well through these jokes. They but they really trying to tell you, like, bro, like cause you I, off track. You go, you off track because I seen you at your best before, and you 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 letting yourself go. You know what I'm okay, saying? and that's that's why I want to take this because <laughs> you know going from. 
I want to talk about uh, the climb from the fall off. Yeah. You at your peak, right? Or you're doing good and you're in this abundant mindset and you you on this right track, but then somehow, somewhere, you mm-hmm. fall off. Yeah. And I feel like that climb back mm-hmm. to the point or pinnacle that you fell off from and then trying to e- exceed that, that's a really far climb. Yeah. Can I- How do you yeah. stay consistent or motivated enough? Because you've done it. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you exactly. I'm going to tell you how this process looks because I go through it all the time. This is the process. You're doing what God wants you to do. And you're like, man, it's kind of boring. Let me serve my flesh a little bit. Take Who little talk time. about it, black let man? Let me go get some shot. Let me go. Let me, I know I was supposed to have an interview today, but uh, I, I've been working. I've been working hard enough. Let me go on out there and have fun. That turned into one day of fun, two, three, four, five, six. You serving your flesh for two months, and you like, I ain't dropped a podcast episode in two months. You like, man, I ain't really been reading my scriptures. I kind of been reading them, but I've been just going through the motions. Yep. I've been talking to God, but I really just been going through the motions because I know if I really connect with him, he's going to tell me, take myself back inside. And I ain't yep. really going to do that right now. I'm yep. Fun, God. Like, I get, I got the podcast. It's going, but I'm, let me. And that's the mode you got to, you like, you like fighting who God calling you to be with who you trying to be. And it's like a tug in the pool. So you get in those modes where you just want to, I just want to relax, man. Like, dang, God, I know. I know. But like, you know what I'm saying? It's literally you like going on your right path and just like knowing like this is where you need to be. And then having a strong relationship with them, when you start to disconnect, it's not only going to be the podcast that's falling off. All areas of your life going to start to feel uncomfortable around this time. And so you're like, oh, I ain't been eating healthy. I've been slacking in the gym now, the podcast. And so you're like, all right, let me get back on track. Boom. And then it's just like me now, I know how to like get back on track, but then it was having people around me that was telling me like I need to get back on track. But now I have the self awareness to just mm-hmm. get back on track. To notice that you're falling to off. Notice like you have to keep people around you because they're gonna be your like if you have good people around you, they're gonna tell you like, bro, what's up with the podcast? Like people reach out to me, what's up, bro? What's up? Yeah. What's up? You know what right. I'm saying? What's up? Like you know what I'm saying? And then you get you get back on track, knowing when people check you, that's God like knocking on your door. You know, God sends people in mysterious ways. See me, I'm real. I'm a real believer. So like a lot of stuff that you ask me, I'm just gonna go straight to God with it because I'm a real believer. You don't. Know I, I mean? love that. <laughs> I, I mean, love I'm, that. I'm a real believer in God. Like I'm a real deal believer. Like like I really like, read. <laughs> I really believe in God. So it's like it's nothing you can ask me. It's gonna go back to just God. Like I asked him for it. He gave it to me. I asked for this confidence. He gave it to me. Yeah. I asked for the platform. He gave it to me. You know what I'm saying? I asked for his life. He gave it to me. I asked for finance. He gave it to me. I asked for a good transition out the military and what I got to do. And he gave it to me. Yeah. So I know he's real. I done been in situations where I was supposed to be done. Yeah. Done. You know what I'm saying? Done. <laughs> and he done. You know what I'm saying? So he bringing me back like, bro, you, you destined. You one of those ones. And I need you to act according to that. Yeah. And so just knowing you call for better. Wanting to be better and walking in that is what's going to keep you on track. Talk about how your discipline plays into your mental health. <clears throat> oh, what does that look like? Just inconsistent. You know, a, a person tells you, hey, if you get up in the morning, you meditate, you go for a nice run, you're going to feel good. You're like, yeah, bro, I did that for three days. I feel good. That fourth day you wake up, you like, oh, not today. It, it, it's direct correlation to you feeling good. You getting up and staying consistent in your everyday habits is going to, it's going to keep you reflect or yeah, mm-hmm. you're going to start to challenge yourself more. You're going to start to become new. The the better you become, it's just like, it's addicting. Yeah. It's like a tattoo. Once you get one, you want more. Once you read one book, you get better. You want to get better. You like, okay, man, like, Oh, like, I didn't think I could get this. Like, wow. Like for real, you know what I'm saying? You just want to get better. You get addicted to getting better. You know what I'm saying? So like the, the backtrack is like, oh, man, I don't even feel myself. No, I don't even feel like myself no more. Let me get back on track and, and keep it going because it made me feel really good when I was doing that. Because nobody likes that feeling. When you know how you feel good, that depressed feeling sucks. So bad. So Listen, nobody, when you know how to make yourself feel good, you know what, and then you just slipped what, into a depression. Like, what are you, you doing here? You know what you're doing when you're self aware at this time. You done did it a couple of times. You like, bro. You're not eating right. You're not eating the right things. You're not, you haven't been working out. You know this. You want to feel good? Go do what you need to do. Yeah. Like, all right, get up. 
That's all it is. Literally. You know what I'm saying? That's, it's, it's that simple, man. Staying connected to God. Because if you stay connected to him, he's not going to let you forget. No. Nope. He's going to remind you every day. It's going to be back in your head every day. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. And I think being so connected to God, sometimes, you know how, like, you might avoid a conversation with somebody that you that you know is going to tell you something that you need to hear, but you might not want to hear it at Always. that time? Mm-hmm. You You have to... Um, maintain your relationship with God like a real relationship and have those open floor conversations with God and be honest about how you feel and be open to criticism and be open to feedback like you would be with a real one-on-one person with a real one-on-one person a lot of people they can they man a lot of people just need to see a person and to have faith like I talked to God about my mistakes from the day before I know I shouldn't have did that, God. Yeah. I'm do better, God. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do better today. Forgive me for my sins. You know, yeah. my shortcomings the day before. You know, make me new today. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Learn how to forgive yourself from the day before. I think that's super important, too. Yes. Yes. What did the journey of forgiveness look like for you? Oh, man. <laughs> it was a lot of forgiving I had to give myself. Um, and at first it's just like, you what know, type of power did you get after you forgave yourself? It's oh, man, you, you get like, you know what I'm saying? The hurt you give to people in relationships, um, that for me, it was more so just publicly apologizing to them, but that wasn't doing anything for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At all. Like you think apologizing to a person is supposed to make you feel better, but you have to really ask God, like, man, please take that off my heart. I'm not that yeah. anymore. Please remove that from my spirit. You know, I want to be better. I want to be new. Like, remove yeah. that from my spirit. Like, that's not me anymore. You know, and he will literally remove your spirit over time. Everything that I've asked God to help me with these over time has happened. Yeah. You consistently pray for it. You know what I'm saying? So that's, yeah. that's big. Just asking him. And so around that time, it was just like me knowing like, okay, just get closer to him. Get closer to him and just like forgive yourself for these things. At first, it's hard because you like, Man, I did these things and I know better. Yeah. If it, it, it's like, man, God, like, please just like, you know what I'm saying? And people keep bringing it up. You know what I'm saying? You going around people and they asking you, oh, remember when you did this? Or it's, 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 it's just difficult. But now when you fully forgive yourself, when people bring stuff up, you're able to laugh it off, man. Like, you don't even know me. In the back of your head, you're just thinking, like, you don't even know me, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And that's, that, it feels good. It, it feels great to know, like, you better. And they, they still thinking about the old self. So, you know, they still where they used to be. And you like, they don't even know, man. <laughs> right. I'm so above that. Yeah. It's just like knowing like, man, I'm, I'm God body, bro. Like I, I'm, I'm different today and everybody has a past. So, and when you start to realize everybody has a past and everybody, nobody is perfect. Everybody's born in sin and shaped in iniquity. You start to realize like this world is just how we are. You know what I'm saying? And so just being better, knowing better, doing better. You made a mistake, but you're not your mistake. So just move from it. You know what I'm saying? And just from that point forward, now you know better. And if you do it again, you know, you can get forgiven again. You know what I'm saying? The right. World, you know what I'm saying? Just know you're not going to be perfect. Yeah. Just do And accepting, accepting that mm-hmm. progression doesn't equal perfection. No, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. Because it's like this. It goes up. And then you're going to be here. Then it may go up, then it's going to be here, but it's never going to, you know what I'm saying, be where it used to be because you're learning more. You right. Know, so you might hit a plateau for a little bit, but then you're going to go up. You might hit a plateau, but it's going to keep going up. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. What is one piece of advice that you would give a black male veteran as it pertains to his mental health? Just so for men, uh, for men specifically, I'm going to tell you, a lot of our mental health comes from our pockets, man, when men feel like they can't, you know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't have the finances, the means to provide, the means to be real men. And you know what I mean? Just making sure that you're doing everything that you have to do to, so first of all, get some money in your pocket, man. You know what I'm saying? Like first and foremost, make sure you good on that end. You know what I'm saying? Then once you're good on that end, you know what I'm saying? Well, first, nah, get your, get your, get right with God first. So then get your paper, man. Yeah. Focus on the right things. If I could go back and tell myself anything, it's like, Focus on the right things right now. All that other stuff is going to come if you just focus on these three things. You know what I'm saying? Just focus on God. Focus on your, your career. You know what I'm saying? Your goals. But everybody has to learn. One piece of advice I could just, man, don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> don't be yeah. hard on yourself. But be intentional. Be intentional with everything. With the people you surround yourself with, the career you choose, be intentional. Have a reason for doing it. 
Don't just do stuff just because. I tell people all that. We're getting too old to just be doing stuff just because. We are at the age where if you're not doing things with intention, what it's, are you doing? It, you ha- you can't just be doing stuff just because. I be telling people that with this straight face. That's why a lot of people don't like talking to me because I'll talk to them with this straight face, and I'm so serious. We cannot just be doing stuff just because. Think about what you're doing before you do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was watching a podcast the other day say emotions, they real. You know what I'm saying? Trauma is real. Depression is real. Being angry, sad, but... Don't make a temporary decision that's going to lead to a, a lifelong regret, you know. So Most definitely. Especially for men. That's not emotional intelligence. Man, I say read, you know what I'm saying, into emotional intelligence. Actually know why you're being triggered. Why are you so angry? It's something that's causing you to be angry. I used to be angry for no reason. Man, I'm blissful. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be angry for no reason. It was stemming from, like, hurt from my childhood. And I just was projecting that to the people around me. Just like yeah. it feels good to get that hurt off your chest and onto somebody else. You know, so learn yourself, read, you know what I'm saying? Want to get better. You know what I'm saying? And, you got any book recommendations? Uh, The Ways of a Superior Man. Mm. It's a great book. It's going to go into relationships, mental health, you know what I'm saying? How to get to your next goal. It's it's like real driven for men. So if you want to, if you want to take that journey into like getting better, that book is one of the first books I picked up that and Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich is more for like the entrepreneur mindset and think. The way as a superior man is to develop your mindset as a man. So yeah. It'll give you a lot of keys and gems that you can apply into your relationship with women, with children, with your career, and it's going to propel you. I'm telling you, these books, they work. I've applied the principles over and over again. They work. And everybody's yeah. saying the same thing in all the books. I've read almost 25 of them, you know, so the principles work. <laughs> you just got to apply them. Most yeah, definitely. Superior man, uh, outwitting the devil. You I know, heard that was a fire book. The Four Agreements. The Four Agreements is amazing. Man, uh, The Master of Love, I'm reading that for the second time. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. really dope, too, when it comes to, like, really regaining self-love in yourself and taking mm-hmm. that, that responsibility off somebody else and giving it back to yourself. It's really one of those regaining books where it talk about the emotional wounds and how to heal them, you know? So it's real dope. I always yeah. recommend that book to a lot of women because I feel like it'll resonate well with women. You yeah. know, I understand really, really well with women. Because I feel like a lot of times with women, we try to, um, as it pertains to love, we give that power away a lot. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? And I know that. Like, I give women game all the time. You know what I'm saying? I've become just like an open book. Just like giving them game, let them know. Like, <laughs> in the mindset of a man sometimes. Like, yeah. let them know. Just, just if we become in, in a society where it's like, you some excuse me sometimes you got to think like a man as a woman like because it's getting it's it's the it's changing it's changing yeah it's changing completely you know what i'm saying it's being intentional it's super important to be intentional not doing stuff just because and doing the work you know do even, the work keeping good people around you keep good people around you always keep and me. those gems i feel like could be not only applied for men but also women like do your work know yourself learn how to love yourself forgive yourself Number one, get close to God. Get close to God. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple crash outs, right? What I consider them crash outs. For me, they would be crash outs where I just feel like I'm at my lowest point and Mm -hmm. I don't really know where to go. And each time I have been directed to get close to God, God has been there to lift me back up. God has been there as my saving grace. Um, And now I'm in a place where if you, nobody that has direct access to me, you can't have direct access to me if you don't have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I can't even have you around in my vicinity. Like I could be cordial with you. I can have you as an acquaintance with it, like with my, in my Mm -hmm. everyday talking to you, speaking with you, exchanging energy with you. I can't do that with you if you don't have a relationship with God because energy is real. It's crazy you said that because I met a woman who, who didn't believe in God and I stopped talking to her with no explanation. I don't blame you, especially somebody that you're interested in. You want to share energy with me? I didn't judge her at all, but I just was like, you have to protect yourself. Absolutely not. I'm cool. Yeah. Because when a person tells me that it comes from a lot of other stuff that I don't want to deal with either, you know what I'm saying? You don't believe in God. It's a lot of trauma that's that's coming from why you don't believe in him. And I'm not about to reconstruct that because I'm a full believer and I don't have time to do that. I don't barely know you. So I just (laughs) left it alone. You know, you Men too, knowing when to, the red flags, man, knowing when you, you're not supposed to be somewhere, right? Get out of there, man. Serve yourself. Respect yourself more to, like, just stop doing stuff, man. 
it took yes. me a long time to realize that. I was just doing stuff young, just like just doing stuff just because my friends was doing. It. Yeah. <laughs> Think about your actions, man. For real, please. No, wait. And the last question I have for you is, what do you think about 50-50 in a relationship? <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. This. I was going to get my spill on that. <laughs> we not in, This ain't even the platform for that because we ain't even going down that road. But I would like you to let the people know where they can reach Mr. Ali Get Money Bank. Y'all, his day, people don't call him Get Money Bank. So no. I, that's just me. Yeah, but true. where can we reach you and listen to you at Mr. Yeah, Ali? Sure. So, uh, Apple Podcasts, Abundant Behavior, um, the same handle on YouTube, Abundant Behavior, uh, Facebook, Ali Banks, then the real Ali Banks. But if you find me on any Instagram, Ali Banks, if you type in Ali Banks on Facebook, I have my link tree. It goes to everything. Okay. So, yeah, if you find, if you, Ali Banks, O L L I E Banks. Yeah. And I will link his podcast in the show notes. So you guys, please, please, please go and check out Abundant Behavior Podcast. That is on all, uh, everywhere where you listen to podcasts and um, follow him. And I will make sure I put all of his information in the show notes. This has been, first of all, I just want to say thank you again for coming and sharing space, coming and giving it. us the of course, thank you so much. The perspective, sharing energy, uh, dropping so many gems from book recommendations to how to heal and care for yourself, not only as a black man, but as a black person and just a person in general. Um, this has been another great episode of the Six Figure Vet podcast featuring Mr. Ollie Banks. The Six Figure Vet is out. Mm-hmm.